because if you weren't here, I would be talking to myself, and then people would think I was crazy. But you might still think I'm crazy, and then you would be quite right. So, um, <laughs> my name is Alex, Brother Blackfeather, and um, I've, been, uh, I've been studying yoga, theory, and practice, um, as well as you know, um, Native American shamanic traditions, Vedic traditions, and a number of different things. So this isn't, I'm not trying to be preachy for any uh, particular culture or way. This is a, a unifying experience, and I'm gonna talk about uh, how sounding, like homing sacred sound vibrations have been used in every religious culture throughout history. So it's a common thread of humanity, of, of how we connect with each other, and with the earth, with the universe, with God, if you think of that in a, a personal sense or just in the harmonic frequency sense. Um, it's, it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna cover oming, chakra balancing, an Andean uh, Quechua, like a South American sort of sounding practice, and, uh, and then we're gonna do some mantras. So these are techniques of balancing, healing, and raising our, our vibrations through sacred sound. Okay. So, um, come some of the different cultures throughout history. In the Vedic practices, there's, uh, in the Vedanta scriptures, there's a saying, uh, this is Sanskrit, Anu Vritti Shabdat. That means one is set free through sound and we're free from the mind, from the, the waves of constant thoughts and disturbances, the, uh, the mental chatter and desires and things that are in our minds. So the word mantra means, uh, man meaning mind, and tra meaning an instrument or to rescue. So we're kind of tuning our body as a divine instrument to get in touch with our, our higher self and to get united with the universe. That's the meaning of yoga, is uh, connection. Um, we're uniting. So we're uniting our mind, our body, our spirit, um, as well as you know, uniting with the greater universe, the earth, and very importantly, each other. So we're, we're joining our voices together in harmony. And that's a very important thing for, for humanity in general. So um, as well as uh, from the Indian culture, there's also like in uh, the Christian Bible, David said, "From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised." In Islam, Muhammad said, "Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High." Buddha said, "All who sincerely call upon my name will come to me after death, and I will bring them to paradise." Uh, in the Vaishnavic tradition, the, uh, the Hare Krishna tradition, they they uh, recommend chanting and singing the holy names uh, as as the ultimate way to uh, to unite with, with spirit. So we're all kind of aware already of the effects that sound have on us. If you listen to music, you know, like minor music kind of has that sad feeling. Happier music, major music has has the uh, happier feel. And so these sounds they bring us in touch with this like this calm sense of inner peace. And, uh, but there's also, you know, sounds for, for raising your vibrations. And this chakra balancing meditation will go through all these different aspects of yourself. But I can go on and on with theory and philosophy. I'm also going to talk about uh, scientific evidence, and medical evidence for um, the effects of chanting on the body or just sounding in general. But I'd like to uh, compare it uh, to Steve Ross, one of my favorite yogis. He uh, uses the analogy of uh, a mango. So you can, you can read a description of what a mango tastes like. You can uh, read about the scientific benefits of eating mango, but it really doesn't compare to the actual experience of biting into and tasting fresh mango. So this is an experiential practice, and we're going to experience this together. Um, if anybody is interested in, in some of the uh, scientific benefits, basically, I, I'm, I have experienced this myself, um, and it's helped me a lot in my life. I practice a lot of these, these chants and things daily, and I've experienced many, many benefits in my life, uh, you know, calming from stress, and raising my energy, and healing. So I'd like, that's why I'm sharing this with you, and it helps that help people.
but it uh, calms the central nervous system. It increases uh, 15 times more nitric oxide, which is uh, a gas that's essential for immune system, nervous system, cardiovascular system. Not to be confused with nitrous oxide. That's that's a different thing I'll say. But um, in 1998, uh, nitric oxide actually received a, a Nobel Prize for its uh, effects on fighting infection and high blood pressure. So like nowadays, we have pharmaceuticals like nitro nitroglycerin people take to uh, calm their, their blood pressure. But yogis 5,000 years ago were practicing these chanting techniques, increasing their nitric oxide through the technology of their body, you know, without any kind of artificial chemicals or anything. So, you know, there's a lot of sound healing practices with, with a lot of different types of instruments. They're all amazing and helpful. But this is using the instrument of your voice to connect with your body, your mind, and your spirit. Um, <laughs> it increases uh, beta endorphins, which are natural painkillers, lowers heart rate, go on and on, but I think I'd rather just get us homing. So, um, this is home, and I'd like to read uh, an Amit Ray quote from uh, his book on Om to uh, introduce this. Om is not just a sound or vibration. It is not just a symbol. It is the entire cosmos, whatever we can see, touch, hear, and feel. Moreover, it is all that is within our perception, and it is all that is beyond our perception. It is the core of our very existence. If you think of Om only as a sound, a technique, or a symbol of the divine, you'll miss it all together. You have to approach it with an attitude of surrender and reverence. Surrendering, merging, and dissolving into the ocean of bliss is the key to Om chanting and meditation. So, Om is also known as, as the creative sound that, that started the universe. So, from Indian tradition to biblical tradition, you know, in the, in the New Testament, it's in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and, and God was the Word. And so that's, you know, the sacred sound that we know the effects it has on our body. And if you think of that in a cosmic sense. So, like, the, the proportional distance uh, of the, the sun to the earth is actually the same proportion of the distance from electrons to the nucleus of the atom, okay, which is uh, approximately 22 million kilometers, 220 million kilometers, which uh, coincidentally is also the frequency of uh, 220 hertz, which is uh, the, the frequency of your channel. So, okay. <laughs> The proportional distance of the sun to the earth is 220 million kilometers, which is the same proportional distance of the electrons of an atom to the nucleus. So that, that 220 hertz is the frequency of, of the, it's, it's known as the frequency of the universe. There's all kinds of uh, telescopic microscopes that listen in on the sound of the Big Bang. And, uh, the sound has been proven to uh, increase like cell regeneration in plants and, and animals as well. So this symbol um, is pretty interesting because there's these like four or five different parts to it. And this lower curve is the ah, like uh, Jason talked about how it's ow, ah, you know, the A-U-M. And the ah part of it, this is your waking reality. This is uh, the male aspect, it's the color red, the springtime. Um, akara means form or shape. So this is like earth, the elements of earth, trees, uh, your consciousness is your waking state. And then this is the, the you part of it. It's kind of like the, the trunk of an elephant. And it symbolizes everything that comes from home everything returns to home. And so the U is Ukara, which is formless or shapeless, like, like the water, air, fire. And this is like the preserver, Vishnu, Lakshmi. Um, then going up to the M, Makara. This is neither shape nor shapeless, so it's like the, the dark energy content of the universe that can't be measured, but it still exists and affects everything. 
this is uh, you know, like winter liberation and destruction. Um, and the charms of Bindu, this is like a, the moon crescent. And so this is this separates these states of consciousness from pure consciousness. This is duality. And then as you go up, this is also known as Maya or the illusion because really we are this pure soul consciousness but we're, we're kind of trapped in all these, these mental aspects. And then once you get past that duality and realize you know, the, the, the oneness of all of us with our spirit, with the universe, with each other, then you get to Korea, which is pure consciousness and bliss. So, but you don't have to even worry about any of that. This is the backstory because really, Om, you just you hear the vibration and you just feel it and you just get in touch with the, that ocean of bliss. We're going to harmonize together and just join our voices as one. So first of all, um, I would just invite everyone to just check in, check in with your, yourself. This is very important um, to be able to just tell, you know, how are you, how's your body feeling? How's your emotional body, your mental body? How do you feel in your spirit? Take some deep breaths. And we're gonna chant one single ohm together. So you can do it in the way that Jason mentioned the Chakra balancing. 
my patients. So um, people might be familiar with these these energy centers in the body. And interestingly enough, they're they're normally considered to be from an Eastern, like a, a Vedic and, and Buddhist tradition. Um, but actually, I recently found out that even uh, even like the ancient Mayans and, and uh, the Incan peoples had their own system of, of uh, energy centers within the body that are tied to organ centers. And it's very similar. So this is kind of uh, very ancient and all universal uh, technology of the body. So I'm just going to go through each of these and there's a mudra, a hand position with each of these seven chakras and uh, a Sanskrit seed syllable. And uh, so starting at the root chakra, so you're kind of sitting on your, your sitting bones and just feeling rooted, grounded, that's good. This is a red vortex of light at the base of your spine. This is your muladhara chakra. And just kind of sending your roots to the earth. This is, you know, your stability, your physical form. And the, the Sanskrit seed syllable is lam. It's pronounced like lam. And what we can do, there's two different ways to do it that are pretty fun. <laughs> Which is, um, you know, you just inhale deeply and you lam, 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 until you run out of breath. And then there's the long, like the long version of it. And so we can do the, the lum 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 and then the long together. And just concentrating on that vibration and that light and just grounding and feeling, you know, safe, grounded, balanced. chakra, your sacral chakra, is your emotions, your desires. Uh, it's connected to your, your uh, appetite, your digestion, your um, reproductive influences. So uh, if you have, you know, anything you need to release from this area, it would be like addictions or unnecessary uh, desires that you want to release. So you're just visualizing this orange light behind your navel that's pure filling up and your the syllable is bum. This is your, your energy levels, your, your willpower, your intentions, and if you have any excess uh, energy or any blockages here, it would manifest in anger. 
So kind of releasing that and just getting in touch with your will because you know you want to accomplish your intentions. And this is really helpful for that. So I like to do a really powerful ROM. Don't be afraid. Raise your voice, raise your vibrations, and harmonize. Wow. Chakra, your Vishuddha chakra, connected to your your thyroid. This is um, growth. It's your intuition. So it's like your voice box. You're speaking your th your truth. It's your communication with the world. Um, the uh, erase this. Okay. The syllable is hum, like you're humming. You're just feeling that pure vibration vibrating in your voice box, healing your, your throat chakra so that you can speak your truth to the world. The mudra is open lotus mudra. So it's like sky blue lotus opening at your, at your throat chakra. And we're gonna hum and just feel that vibration.
your third eye, your ajna chakra, is located in the center of your brow. So when you have your eyes closed, you're looking up and you just kind of see this eye. Your third eye is connected to your pineal gland, which is the part of your brain that creates melatonin that puts you to sleep and dimethyltryptamine, which Jason discussed in the ayahuasca workshop. This uh, is the spirit molecule that transitions your, your spirit between when you're born and when you die, and as well as when you're in dream states, sometimes it's released. So this is your, your perception, it's, it's your psychic abilities, you're kind of tapping into your, your, your mind's eye, which is your, your spiritual sight into your, your past, present, future, your sight into your path in life. And just tapping into that with the Sanskrit seed syllable, shyam. Visualizing this pure indigo light from your, your third eye and chanting Shyam. The mudra, it's Kali mudra, it's mudra, it's like this. And we chant Shyam, visualizing your third eye, opening your third eye. Inhale. Shyam. Finally, your Sahasrara Chakra. This is your crown chakra. It's a thousand petaled lotus that floats just above your crown. It's of a, a violet or a white color. And as this blossom opens up, it beams down light from the center of the universe. Diamond white light that fills up every one of your centers. So this is every aspect of your physical, spiritual, emotional being that it's filling up, just nourishing every aspect of you. Your crown chakra is your connection to the divine, is your connection to the universe. It's one single ohm. Just visualize that opening up, and you, just, you become very light as you're filled up with this, this healing light. Yana Mudra, this is the Om Mudra, this is the sound of creation, the sound of healing. One single Om together. practicing this, this chakra bouncing meditation each day just kind of gets you ready for anything, you know, purifying every aspect of you. So now I uh, would like to, to share with you some of the Andean way. This is uh, the culture of the Andes in South America, ancient Incan, Aztec, Mayan culture. and. Uh, they have sounds, their sounds are in Quechua, which is another very ancient, powerful language. And uh, the, the first word is munai, which means love and beauty. But it's it's not like personal love or, or romantic love. It's, it's like um, universal love that just kind of overflows from your heart for all, for all beings. And um, they say that when you have this munai, radiating from your heart, it, uh, it's like a, how the rainbow follows the rain, it just, it just naturally flows to, from you uh, to everyone and everything around you. Um, 
so we in the the, the Andean uh, shamanic tradition, they chant this like like Mu-nai, the pitch lowers. It's kind of a, a balance to the way that we raise the pitch in the Sanskrit way. So. I'm going to invite you to practice this, this moon eye, just feel that, that loving energy. So it's like, moon reciprocity or interdependence. So this is, uh, the literal translation is today for you, tomorrow for me. So in the, the Andean way is a, a, a culture of reciprocity. Uh, someone in, in another workshop was comparing it the way that uh, today we, we just kind of want to get as much as we can with as little work as we can, you know. It's kind of the, the capitalist uh, way, but, but uh, in interdependent cultures, which we really are, um, it's very important to have reciprocity. So this is kind of giving before receiving. And uh, this is giving to the earth and all living things, sharing loving kindness, uh, labor, knowledge with fellow humans, animals. I need. share a little bit with you about the, uh, the final sort of uh, evolution of, of sacred sounds, which is mantras. I mentioned in the beginning the, the etymology of mantra means man meaning mind and tra meaning to rescue or as an instrument. So these are instruments for, for getting your mind in tune. And uh, different ways people chant mantras, these are uh, japa beads. So this is in the, in the Vaishnavic tradition. You uh, chant rounds on these beads, which is just another form of meditation that kind of you can keep track of how many rounds you're doing. And uh, this is like, Japa is, is kind of quiet, personal chanting, where you're just you know, chanting a mantra in the morning on your beads. The other way is Kirtan, which I know some of you were we're here enjoying this blissful Sri Kala's kirtan that we've been doing. Um, and that's the singing, the call and response singing of mantras. Really, really raises the energy, gets a good momentum with all the music and the harmony of the instruments, the rhythm of it. And uh, bhajans are just sung forms of mantras. Um, 
So there's mantras for, for different purposes, uh, different deities, which, you know, different deities that control different aspects of, of, of the universe. So, you know, say you wanted more abundance in your life, you might chant Om Shri Mahalakshmi Swaha to Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. Or if you wanted love or, or health, you know, there's, there's millions of deities. But um, one mantra I'd like to share with you is the universal happiness mantra. It's, uh, it's only four words. It's Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. So this means, may all beings everywhere in all worlds be happy and free. This is a, a declaration of universal happiness to all beings in the universe, including yourself. So, <laughs> sometimes we forget about, about that. But um, some of the translations of it are, may all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life in some way to that universal well-being and happiness or may all beings have happiness and the sources of happiness may all beings be free from suffering and the sources of suffering may all beings dwell in equanimity free from attachment and aversion and so I've, I've, I've spent a, a few years kind of memorizing these mantras and kind of integrating them into my being by the daily practice of them and it's just it's really helpful. Um, so this can be sung, uh, or it can be chanted. We can, we can try a couple of the, the different ways. So the singing way is, uh, they, they do this in the beginning of Jiva Mukti Yoga. Uh, it's like, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that well-being, that happiness, from Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti means peace, 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 and peace. Or you know, if you were chanting it, you'd be like, Another method of, of uh, concentrating the mind to free yourself from worries or desires. Um, okay, so I'd like to read this, this quote um, that's along these same lines. I really like this. It's called, it's, um, it goes like this. The more knowledge we acquire, the more mystery we find. A human being is a part of the whole called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical illusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Nobody is able to achieve this completely, but the striving for such achievement is in itself a part of the liberation and the foundation for inner security. So that's a quote by Albert Einstein. I heard he was pretty smart, so he stands for something. But um, the 
the, uh, the final mantra that I will share with you. Um, we, we were working with this mantra a lot in Kirtan. This is known as the Maha Mantra, which means the, the Great Mantra. It's said to contain all of the energies of all of the other thousands of mantras. Uh, in these in three words, in a pattern, the three words are Hare, Krishna, and Rama. And so, Hare means uh, the energies of Krishna, the, the feminine form of, of God, the, the divine and feminine. And uh, the Krishna, the word Krishna is a word for God. Uh, it means all attractive. Um, so this is, and then Rama means the, the reservoir of all pleasures. So as you chant Hare Krishna, you're, it's the, the union, the divine union of masculine and feminine. It's the love of a mother for a child, the, the love of a man for a woman, uh, familial love, and the love of uh, devotion. If you, uh, if you think of the divine as a, a personal form, then it's that sort of devotional love. And Rama is getting in touch with that pleasure, the bliss of that, that nectar of devotion. So, Hare Krishna, the, the pattern is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it's a, it's a very well balanced uh, pattern, and it's 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 very like I don't want to say like hypnotic, but you know it kind of really gets your mind into a nice rhythm, a nice uh, connection with, with that sort of loving mentality. So. Can everybody uh, remember that, that pattern? As we start doing it, you kind of fall into it, the, the rhythm of it, and then soon you realize you're just joyous and ecstatic and not worrying or caring about anything. It's just, hare, hare. So, builds up that kind of energy. So, so we'll, uh, we'll chant this. For a Actually, let's, let's sing it. Let's, let's really raise our, our vibration right here. <laughs> Try to think of a good tune. Okay, I'm going to go with the, uh, the traditional. It's, it's kind of a loving, it gives me that kind of loving feeling. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, in Kirtan, it follows a, a call and response pattern. So I would call it out, and then everyone as a group would respond. And that way you get the perfect balance of singing, which is giving, and you know, resting, which is receiving. So when you're when you're listening, you're just kind of focusing on those divine ancient words. And then when you're when you're, when you're singing it, you're harmonizing with your, with the divine. You're harmonizing with each other, you're just feeling that divine. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Thank you.
Like I was saying in the beginning, this this kind of using sound to tap into the divine and to heal yourself is used in, in a lot of different cultures. You know, like every culture has sung you know, you know, drumming instruments and singing as a way of prayer and communion. You know. um, this is from the Andean uh, South American tradition. This is Quechua. And, uh, you know, like sometimes we do like sweat lodges and you have the Native American like singing and it's very like like howling like the wolves like the, hi, 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 hi. And then, you know, the, the Indian 
tradition has the whole thing. And it's all just, you know, it's all just vibrations. Because really, all of us, like our bodies, like I, I was speaking about the, the cosmos, the, the planets, it's all just vibrating at, at different frequencies. And so when we when we join our frequencies and we harmonize together, it, it really builds a lot of power. Did you wanna did you wanna chant these? Yeah. Okay. I wanna go to the crystal workshop, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. So it's um it's kinda it's kinda fun to do the it's like a low, it's like a guttural in the the, the Andean way, it's like Oi. I need is the reciprocity, so it's today for you, tomorrow for me, just kind of giving, receiving. So if anyone wants to join in this vibration.